Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching Top 10's Net. In the video today, P.T. Barnum's 10 Most Famous Human Freak Show Attractions. During the 1800s, Phineas Taylor Barnum, better known as P.T. Barnum, became famous as the Great American Showman. Barnum specialized in displaying odd and intriguing attractions to audiences who were eager to pay to see something that was out of the ordinary. One of the main ways that Barnum drew crowds was to exploit abnormalities in human beings. The display became known as his Freak Show, which traveled around the world and inspired many other circuses to follow suit with their own versions. It should be noted that Freak is an outdated and a rather effective Offensive term, since these people, they were simply that. They just so happened to be people who were born with disabilities. However, in a way, many of these performers, they were blessed because they had the chance to become rich and famous, which is more than many able-bodied people could do at the time. Number 10. Joyce Heff the very first attraction that began P.T. Barnum's career was a woman named Joyce Heff, who he claimed was 161 years old. Barnum received a letter about Joyce from a fellow circus owner named R. W. Lindsay in Kentucky, so he paid her a visit. She was blind, and her eyes looked sunken into her head, which gave her the appearance of being very old. She also went on and on about the time she spent being the wet nurse of George Washington. Barnum wrote in his biography that he paid $1,000 for her and became the new owner. Keep in mind that this was during the 1830s, so slavery was still legal in the United States. Barnum took her on a tour, starting out in New York City and traveling around the East Coast. He would show off her act in hotels, inns, museums, and concert halls. If you're wondering why people would pay so much just to see an old woman sitting in a chair, well, Joyce looked really old. In fact, she looked so old that one newspaper actually thought she was a robotic puppet or an automaton. During this time, Barnum began to pick up more human attractions to add to his show. Joyce died in 1836, and when doctors performed an autopsy, they concluded she was only 80 years old when she died. In fact, there was so much debate and speculation as to Joyce's true age that 1,500 people actually paid to be present during the autopsy. Despite the fact that the public knew they had been duped and essentially paid just to see a pretty average old lady, they still wanted to come back for more, proving that they were eager to see whatever spectacle Barnum decided to come up with. Number 9. General Tom Thumb when Charles Stratton was just four years old, his parents took him to meet P.T. Barnum. He was only 25 inches high and weighed 15 pounds. His parents said that he stopped growing when he was only six months old. Barnum then proceeded to teach him how to sing, dance, and impersonate historic figures like Napoleon Bonaparte. He also coupled up with other performers in comedy acts. Barnum gave him the stage name of Tom Thumb after an English fairy tale character. Barnum told everyone that he was 11 years old and dressed him up in handmade suits. Audiences absolutely adored this tiny gentleman, and he toured through the United States and Europe. Stratton was able to enjoy a life of wealth and luxury from his performances. He became essentially the world's first international superstar. He bought a beautiful home and even owned a yacht. By the 1850s, Barnum was one of the wealthiest men in New York, and it was all thanks to the popularity of Tom Thumb. Number 8. The Warren Sisters after the success of General Tom Thumb, Barnum decided to gather more proportionate dwarves for his traveling circus. This meant the bodies of these dwarves needed to be in the same proportions as an average adult, only miniaturized. Lavinia and Minnie Warren were sisters born seven years apart, and they both suffered from a pituitary disorder, while the rest of their siblings grew to an average size. Lavinia was an actress, and she even played in a silent film called The Lilliputian's Courtship. She actually went on to marry Tom Thumb, and of course Barnum exploited the ceremony to the fullest extent. Minnie Warren married Commodore Nutt, who was yet another dwarf performer. Sadly, Minnie died during childbirth. Abraham Lincoln was a huge fan of little people, and he met with them personally. Number 7. Myrtle Corbin, the Four-Legged Girl Myrtle Corbin had a Dipicus twin growing inside her body that never fully formed in the womb. She had two sets of a fully formed lower body from the belly button down, and one torso, one head, and a set of arms. Myrtle joined the P.T. Barnum Ringling Circus Freak Show as the four-legged woman when she was just 13 years old. She earned more than $450 a week, and when you take into account inflation, that's about $11,000 a week by today's standards. During her travels, Myrtle met a man named James Clinton Bickle in Kentucky, and they were married when she was 19 years old. When she got pregnant, she was studied in medical journals across the country. Not only did she have two legs, but she also had two sets of internal and external sexual organs. She experienced giving birth out of both sets of legs, having a total of five children. Number 6. Zip, the Pinhead 
William Henry Johnson grew up in a family of former slaves. He had a medical condition known as microcephaly. This essentially means that the brain does not develop properly and gives someone a very small head. Since the brain is underdeveloped, people with microcephaly are also mentally challenged. Barnum added William Johnson to his show, calling him Zip the Pinhead. Barnum claims that he was the missing link of evolution between man and apes, and so he put him inside a large cage. As time went on, Barnum claimed that he had tamed this missing link, and Zip the Pinhead stood alongside other freaks on display. The shape of the skulls of people with microcephaly were soon nicknamed pinheads. In the 1932 movie Freaks, several pinheads were featured alongside the circus sideshow acts. Number 5. Prince Randian – The Living Torso Prince Randian was born in the South American country of Guyana, and his true name was never known. He had Tetra Amelia syndrome, meaning he was born without arms or legs. At the age of 18, he moved to the United States to perform for Barnum. His specialty was rolling and lighting his own cigarettes with his lips, and he could also write words with his mouth. Sometimes they would dress him up like a snake, a caterpillar, or a potato. In 1932, he appeared in the movie Freaks, where he demonstrated his cigarette trick. Prince Randian had a great sense of humor, and it helped his popularity with the ladies. He was married and had five children. He died at the age of 63 years old from a heart attack after giving a performance in New York City. Number 4. The Wild Men of Borneo Barnum continued to bring on dwarves to the freak show, but with a twist. He met brothers Hiram and Barney Davis. They were mentally disabled, and despite the fact that they weighed only 45 pounds, they possessed incredible strength and could lift up to 300 pounds. One of their main acts would be picking up members of the audience. Barnum decided to call them Wayno and Plutonor, presenting them as the Wild Men of Borneo. He also invented a backstory that they were natives who were captured from the island of Borneo. The audiences were made to believe that everyone from Borneo were savages who looked and acted just like these brothers. During the course of their time performing at Barnum's New American Museum in New York City, they earned over $200,000, which was a tremendous amount of money back in the 1960s and was like making them millionaires today. As they grew older, both twins began going blind. They were taken care of well into their old age, which was into their 90s. However, the lie about their true identities continued in the public eye. Even when the newspapers wrote the obituary for Plutonor, they wrote it as if he truly was a wild man from Borneo. Number 3. Josephine Clofulla, the Bearded Lady Josephine Boyce de Schoen was born in Switzerland in 1827, and she suffered from a condition known as hypertrichosis. By the time she was 8 years old, she already had a beard on her face that was 2 inches long. Barnum hired Josephine, but decided to change her last name. Barnum believed that when audiences saw her, they would debate over whether she truly was a bearded lady or just a man wearing a dress. Much to his disappointment, guests tended to accept Josephine's gender. In order to spark the debate and get attention, in 1853, Barnum hired a man named William Char to sue him for fraud. After the case appeared in court, both Josephine's father and her husband gave their testimony to the court, and three different doctors confirmed that she was, in fact, a woman. This publicity stunt, it totally worked. The case was reported all over the press, and it led to thousands of New Yorkers pouring in to his American museum to see her. Number 2. Chang Yu Sing, the Chinese Giant Chang Yu Sing was over 8 feet tall, and he weighed 364 pounds. P.T. Barnum loved to dress him in long Chinese robes because he believed that long clothing gave the illusion of height. Barnum advertised that Chang was actually 9 feet tall. When Chang became a part of the freak show, he was sure to highlight what made him different, poking fun at the stereotype that Chinese people were typically short. So, of course, a Chinese giant was considered to be very much out of the ordinary, and drew an interested crowd for at least a short time. There are not too many records of Chang Yu-sing's time spent in the P.T. Barnum freak show, so it's likely that he got his payment for a short-term contract, only to return to his normal life. Number 1. Isaac W. Sprague, The Human Skeleton Isaac W. Sprague started out just like any normal boy born in East Bridgewater, Massachusetts. He was a happy child who particularly loved to swim, and everything was going great until he turned 12 years old. Isaac began losing weight very quickly, even though he still had a very healthy appetite. At the time, doctors could not figure out what was wrong with him, but doctors eventually diagnosed him with progressive muscular atrophy. He worked his father's business of being a cobbler until his parents passed away when he was in his 20s. 
He was physically too weak to do the hard labor of shoemaking on his own, so he auditioned for a role in Barnum's American Museum. He landed the very lucrative gig as the human skeleton, making $80 per week or $2,000 a week with modern inflation. He simply had to stand there on display, but he still carried around a can of milk as to ensure he was always trying to keep up his strength. He continued working for Barnum for several years, even meeting his wife and fathering children. By the time he was 44 years old, he still only weighed 43 pounds. He died at the age of 46, which is actually much longer longer than the average life expectancy of someone with this disease. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that like button below and don't forget to subscribe. Brand new videos just like this every day of the week. Also check out some videos from the archives over there on the right. And as always, thank you for watching.